So if you've been following me on Instagram for the last 10 months, then odds are you've seen me post about how much I love the Mars bar. For me personally, no other bar has affected my training as much as this one. It's by far my favorite specialty bar, and it might be my favorite overall bar of the 50 or so that I have here in my gym. In this video, we'll talk about everything you need to know about the Mars bar. I'll detail all the things that I love about it, as well as a few things that I think could be improved on. By the end of it, you should be able to tell if the Mars bar is for you. More on that, coming up. Hey, what's up friends? I'm glad you're here because today is yet another perfect day to talk about gym equipment. Hey guys, my name is Adam with Garage Gym Lab and if you're new here, this channel is all about testing and reviewing gym equipment, building the home gym community, and providing inspiration to anybody out there who's looking to build their dream gym. So if that's something you're into, I definitely encourage you to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all the weekly content. Okay, so a little bit of background. The Mars Bar has been out for a while now. I first posted it on my Instagram on February 16th of 2019, right before it was officially launched. The price hadn't been determined or anything, but I was really intrigued by this bar because I primarily back squatted in the low bar position, yet I really enjoyed the feel of this safety squat bar yoke. The Mars bar advertises itself, among other things, as being a low bar squat alternative and not as a safety squat bar. To be clear, this is not a safety squat bar. It may look like it with the yoke and the camber design, but it has a very different feel. Now at the time I was a straight bar purist and really only a safety squat bar user on accessory days. It wasn't until about 15 months later in May of 2020 that I decided to actually buy the Mars bar. My training had sort of evolved away from a powerlifting focus and more towards a general strength, stay healthy and active kind of thing. I was using the Elite FTS SS Yoke Bar a lot more frequently in my training. Great bar, I've been using it for years with great success, partly because I was just enjoying it and partly also because I was feeling pretty beat up from straight bar squatting in that low bar position. My wrists, my elbows, my shoulders, it was all feeling pretty achy and I was really just in need of a little bit of a break. So I ended up ordering the Mars Bar in the heart of quarantine and waiting a grueling five months in order to actually receive it. Let me know in the comment section below the longest you've had to wait for gym equipment during COVID. I'd be very interested to see who the longest is. Anyway, I received the bar on September 24th and I decided to run the entire squat Toba programming using only the Mars bar. That way I could get a really good feel for it and also just understand it. By the way, if you're looking for a really fun program or maybe you just need a change of pace to your normal training, highly recommend Squat Tober by Pen and Paper Strength and Sornex. There's an amazing community around it. It's fun, it's challenging, and you'll see serious results. I kid you not, from the second that I got underneath the Mars bar, I was totally hooked, almost literally, because the yoke wants to actually hook you. It felt natural, it felt unique, and it felt great to low bar squat again without aggravating my arms. For the entire month of October, I didn't put a single straight bar or a traditional safety squat bar on my back at all. Everything was done with the Mars bar. By the end of the program, I had completely fallen in love with this bar. So much so, in fact, that I was actually willing to overlook some of the things that I don't really care about this bar. More on that coming up. But since the end of Squattober and really for the last nine months, I have only used the Mars bar for squatting. Unless I'm actively reviewing a straight bar or unless I'm using a traditional safety squat bar for accessory movements. Some of this has to do with me no longer having aspirations to be a competitive powerlifter, and a lot of it has to do with Mars Bar simply being that transformative for me. So with that context out of the way, let's get into the review itself. I mentioned earlier that despite the Mars Bar looking similar to a traditional safety squat bar, it's actually very different, and here's why. A traditional safety squat bar sits high on the traps and it has a camber angle that wants to pitch you forward. In that sense, it's a great upper back builder because you have to fight from being folded over. It also produces a more upright torso angle which tends to create a more quad bias movement. In addition to just regular back squatting, you can do things like lunges, good mornings, step ups, etc. And depending on which safety squat bar you have, you can also perform some upper body movements like JM presses, shoulder presses, etc. Another reason why the safety squat bar is such a popular option is because it's more comfortable and it reduces or 
altogether eliminates a lot of that upper extremity stress that a straight bar can cause in some people. The Mars bar, similar to a traditional safety squat bar, is also very comfortable for the same reason. The difference is that the Mars bar sits much lower on the back. Remember, this is a low bar squat alternative, and it also has a different camber angle relative to a safety squat bar. You can still perform a variety of movements using the Mars bar, some of which I found to be more effective and or more comfortable than a traditional safety squat bar. More on that in a second. To be fair, however, there are movements that you can perform on a traditional safety squat bar that you can't on the Mars bar. So the first thing you're likely to notice about the Mars bar is its unique yoke and handle setup. Instead of a linear handle design like you would find on something like the Elite FTS, the Mars bar has a curved handle. It looks and feels similar to a backpack, which is a pretty interesting comparison because once this is on your back, it's not going anywhere like a backpack. The handles themselves tend to sit right in front of your chest. And what I like about that is you don't have an awkward long handle system to deal with when you're deep in a squat. This is one of the main reasons why I prefer the short and stubby handles on the Crepensec safety squat bar, as well as the moderate handles on the Elite FTS. For me personally, long handles have always just felt really awkward. Where the Mars bar differs from some of the bars like the Elite FTS, the Crepensec, the Titan Fitness, the Bells of Steel, etc., is that the handle itself, not the actual welded bar, but the actual handle is not removable. Then again, you can't really cheat with the Mars bar like you can with a safety squat bar. I actually have a video that you can watch right here on that very subject. But one of the benefits of being able to remove the handle on a safety squat bar, aside from eliminating the possibility of cheating, is that it opens up the possibility of performing some upper body movements. For instance, you can't perform a JM press on the Mars bar. Now, that's sort of a niche movement that not everybody's gonna be doing, but if that is something that you're into, just know that you're not gonna be able to get it with the Mars bar. The yoke system on this bar is extremely comfortable. In my opinion, it's the most comfortable that I've ever tried, and I've tried a lot of them. Now, it's important to note that the current version of the Mars bar is slightly different than what you see on my version. When you look at my copy, it has a nice wrapped vinyl, similar to what you would find on something like the Elite FTS. They've since redesigned this to now include a custom molded polyurethane with a stamped logo and no vinyl. I'm not sure if this was a cost saving decision, maybe it was a labor decision. I haven't used the molded version, so it's impossible for me to speak to the feel between those two. However, I definitely prefer the look of the vinyl over the current version. The biggest benefit of the Mars bar in my eyes is that it strikes an amazing balance. This is made possible through a combination of its yoke design as well as its camber angle. There are three movements that I think are especially worthy of discussion as it relates to the Mars bar. You've got your back squat, you've got your front squat, and you've got your good morning. So let's start with the back squat. When the Mars bar is on your back, it is totally locked in. As you can see, it has a natural resting position sort of in that mid thoracic region. So definitely low in barbell terms. However, you can technically manipulate this position to an extent. I've never felt the need or the desire to, and I think that most people would agree that its natural resting position is the most ideal given the fact that it is so well balanced. When it comes to an actual squat using the Mars bar, you'll notice that it is very similar to a low bar squat using a straight bar. This is a more hip dominant movement, and you can see that in the shallower angle with the flatter back. Conversely, compare that same Mars bar position to that of a safety squat bar. You'll notice that the safety squat bar has a steeper angle with a more upright torso, indicating, as I mentioned earlier, a more quad dominant movement. Another really cool feature of the Mars bar as it relates to the back squat is that the handles are truly optional. Here's a clip of Stan Efferding squatting 515 for five without using his hands at all. Now, I tend to use my hands. I just find it to be a bit more natural feeling, a bit more comfortable. But unlike a traditional safety squat bar where you have to use a little bit of force maybe to keep that bar in position, you don't have to worry about that at all with the Mars bar. So say for example, you're a big Hatfield squatter. Well, you're very likely to love the Mars bar because there is quite literally zero concern over that bar falling off your back. Next up, we have the front squat. Admittedly, I didn't really buy into the whole front squat hype when first learning about the Mars bar and its perceived benefits. I mean, how can a bar that advertises itself as being a low bar squat alternative effectively be used for a front squat? 
the premise just didn't really compute to me. And remember when your mom told you not to judge a book by its cover? Well, guilty as charged here because front squatting with the Mars bar is actually a dream. If you're somebody who struggles with front squatting with a straight bar due to your wrist or your shoulders, then you're likely going to love the Mars bar as an option for front squats. Look at the plate position between a front squat with the Mars bar and a front squat with a straight bar. They're very similar, yet the Mars bar is much more comfortable. And again, it's perfectly balanced due to the yoke, the camber, and that wrapped handle design. You don't even have to use your hands on the front squat. Although I do like to put my hands right here on the pad as if to cover my exposed pecs. The way I see it, I'm trying to train my legs and my upper back with the front squat. I don't want my wrist or my shoulders, neither of which really benefit from that lift at all to be a limiting factor for me. So in that sense, the Mars bar really allows me to concentrate on what's most important. And thirdly, we have the good morning. This isn't really a movement that I'm doing much in my training these days. However, it is a great movement for the Mars bar. Historically, I primarily perform good mornings with a traditional safety squat bar, which is also a good choice. However, since having the Mars bar and using it a little bit, in my opinion, it's clearly the better option. So with a safety squat bar, again, that weight is gonna tend to sit higher up on the traps. It's gonna increase that moment arm and it's gonna put a little bit more shear on the lumbar spine. With the Mars bar, that weight sits a little bit lower on the back, shortening that moment arm and thereby reducing the shear on the lumbar spine, relatively speaking at least. So at the risk of sounding like a broken record, if you're somebody who's big on good mornings, then you're likely gonna love the Mars bar. In addition to those three lifts, the Mars bar is great for things like lunges, especially the walking variety, step ups, etc. As a general rule of thumb, when you're using the Mars bar, you're probably gonna need to lower your J cups a little bit. For example, I've got a three by three rack with one inch holes here. I have to lower my J cups two holes when I'm using the Mars bar relative to a straight bar. Otherwise, I'm standing on my tippy toes to try to get it to rack. Speaking of racking this bar, due to the wrapped handle system, it's gonna have a tendency to spin on you inside the rack. So as you're coming out of a set, just be aware of that so you don't catch a handle to the grill. Another thing to point out is that this shaft is finished in a bright zinc plating and overall the bar weighs 65 pounds, which of course, unfortunately means there's gonna be a little bit of extra math involved when you're using the Mars bar. All right, so that's a lot of high praise, but this bar isn't without its shortcomings. First up, we've got the sleeve design, grooved and black oxide. If you've been following me on Instagram or reading my reviews for however many number of years now, then you probably know that I actually love black oxide. On a knurled barbell, not on a sleeve where it's just gonna wear down and oxidize, which you can clearly tell is happening on my Mars bar. Secondly, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I really don't like a groove sleeve. They're much louder than a smooth sleeve. And in my experience, the perceived benefit of them keeping plates on the bar better is marginal at best. On a bar like this, where we're squatting a lot, where we're lunging a lot, where we're performing good mornings, we're gonna be using collars the vast majority of the time anyway. So the benefit there just isn't there in my opinion. And now you just have a loud sleeve. If this sleeve was smooth and also in bright zinc like the rest of the bar, I'd be a lot happier. The good thing about these sleeves, however, is they're Olympic sized, which means you can use any collar. They're also fixed, they're not gonna rotate, but that's totally normal for a bar of this style. The second downside is this bar is pretty expensive. For a niche bar, $629 is gonna price some people out. Then you factor in the third downside, which is freight only shipping, and that's only going to increase. Then you factor in the fact that they won't ship, at least currently, to a residential address, and that's gonna be a problem for some folks as well. Unfortunately, when they were sending these out residentially, they had a lot of issues with the couriers either damaging the bars or leaving them at houses without signatures, and so they've had to resort to only shipping to a commercial address. So if you want this bar, just know that you need access to one. Now, the most common question that I get asked about the Mars bar and whether or not someone should buy it is how does it compare to the Kabuki Transformer bar? And of those two, which one should I buy? In full disclosure, I don't own a Transformer bar currently. I also have not used V4 of the Transformer bar. I have used extensively the V3 Transformer bar. And after talking to some people who I trust who own the V4, I have a few thoughts. First of all, both are great bars at a pretty similar price. 
The Kabuki transformer bar is clearly the more versatile option. It has a staggering 24 adjustment options. It has a front squat, a low bar, and a good morning setting. However, on that low bar setting, you really have to actively pull down on those handles to prevent the bar from rolling off your back. Obviously, that's not the case with the Mars bar. If versatility is what you're after, and you actually plan on taking advantage of all of those adjustment options, then I think that the Kabuki bar is a great buy. If specificity is what you're after, then I think the Mars bar is the better option. In other words, the Kabuki bar may do a lot of things well to really well, but the Mars bar does a few things superbly. Again, I think both bars are great, but ultimately it comes down to user intent and fit. Speaking personally, this is the best specialty bar that I've ever used. It has legitimately transformed my training. So much so, in fact, that I'm willing to look past two things that I really don't like. Grooved black oxide sleeves. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not planning on competing in powerlifting anytime soon. So unless I'm actively reviewing a straight bar, I just don't see myself using one on low bar squats or front squats as long as I have the Mars bar considering this gives me what I want and need for those lifts. So with all of that said, what do you guys think of the Mars bar? Is this something that you'd like to add to your gym? Is the relatively steep price something that deters you or not really? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, be well and we'll chat soon. Bye.